I still remembered the slinky dame. I couldn't shake her from my gray matter. She was a tall, red-headed cupcake, all curves, with skin like icing. She was diapered in a smart, pert dress, and when she spoke, her pipes were like a lullaby to my listeners. Despite these things, there was something about her that batted me for a dizzy. Something that just wasn't right. That day in my office, she had insisted on calling me by my full moniker, Chase Cutter, and had dropped 5,000 credits for me to trace a skip. After some routine scoping, crunching some odd facts, adding two and two and jigsawing the pieces, I had finally traced him down. That part wasn't too hard. The stiff part was knowing what the beefer looked like. How can a private snoop trace a bird without being able to recognize his mush? It was all so weird. So, there he was, twenty paces in front of me. I had the dope boxed into a dead-end alley. It got under my hide, though. I didn't want to face a quarry where we were both boxed in. That meant only one of us could angle away. The mug had lured me to this corner where there were no lamps. I didn't even have the moonlight to help. It was blotted out by heavy clouds that dragged across the sky like clods of mud falling off your hooves on a white rug. I took a deep breath. There was nothing around us but shuffling shadows, mine and the skip I had traced down. I slid the blaster from my flogger pocket. It felt firm and nice in my mitt. I always felt better with my blaster drawn. It gave me a warm feeling of satisfaction. Still, I quaked. The silence that hung in the air gave me a bad case of the creeping memes. Keeping my peepers focused, I heeled closer, slicing the distance between myself and the skip. He just stood there with his back to me. Why didn't he wheel around? I gritted my grinders as I gripped the blaster tighter and felt the hard steel cut into the palm of my mitt. It was the moment of truth. Eli, I called. The hoofer heeled around swiftly, and I jumped when I scoped his pan. His glim seemed to glow an eerie blue that gave me goosebumps the size of grapefruits. As he shuffled toward me, I could lamp more of his features or lack thereof. His mug was metallic, and there was a microphone where his kisser should be. It looked like an orange that had been jammed into his puss. Scram, Earthling. He spoke in a voice that wasn't a voice, a voice that was just sound. I yanked the trigger to my blaster, but nothing happened. Then I felt like I had been hit by a hover boiler that sent me flying ten feet through the air. I landed flat on my back, and the mug sprang at me. His cloyish digits held my wrists with the grip of a steel clamp. I raised my peepers to stare into his shiny, metallic map. You fool, Eli said. You fall for Leontina's feminine wiles, and you find yourself grappling with a Saturnian? Leontina. That was the Colleen's name, the weird Bim. But what did she have to do with a Saturnian, I wondered. But the question was answered for me. Now you die, Earthling. Eli said as he wrapped his mitts around my throat. For putting the finger on me. I felt the darkness closing in. And before it was really black, I piped that sound that wasn't a voice. Didn't you know that Leontina was a Venusian? That Venus and Saturn both have spies here on Earth? I felt my body relax as my lids began to shudder down over my glims. Then there came the yellow burst of a ray from a blaster. It caught Eli in the side and knocked him off me. I whipped my steeple around to lamp Leontina ankling toward us. Eli was next to me, writhing on the pavement, clutching his side and leaking green ooze. Leontina twisted the knob of her blaster and plugged Eli again, and this time his frame dissolved into a pile of charred ash. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you everything, Chase Cutter, she said as she pulled me to my hooves. We have been at war with Saturn for years. Our intelligence reports that they are planning an invasion of Earth. That would be genocide for your kind, and it would give them another stronghold from which to launch attacks against us. 
I trust that you will keep all of this in strict confidence. Mum's the word, I smiled. I piled into my hover boiler and cruised off into the night. Maybe this dame wasn't so weird after all. <laughs>